go to our starting grid, Shane Cottle on the pole. Bud Keating will start alongside. Row number two, Ron Gregory and Ricky Stenthouse, Jr. In row three, Randy Bateman and Aaron Pierce. Row number four, former winner, Double D, Dave Darlin, and the hot shoe, John Stanbro. Let's go to row five with Tom Capey and Billy Weiss. Row number six, Kevin Huntley on the inside, and Levi Jones, your current national sprint point leader. Back in row seven, longtime driver Donnie Beachler and Jerry Coons. Shane Hollingsworth alongside Paul White make up row number eight. And in row nine, Mike McGurdio and Brian Tyler. Row number 10, Justin Allgaier and the driver from Maryland, Chappie Kanak. Row 11, Russ Gamester and Wayne Rudiman Jr. Row number 12 on the inside, Hot Rod Johnny Heidenreich and JP Johnny Parsons Jr. In row 13, Matt Neely and Hud Cohn. Row number 14, Ray Bull and the 28 of Tim Barber. Row number 15, Derek King alongside Tim Siner. And in your final row, the 199 of Cameron Dodson, 33, Roger Ragers, a green flag comes out. Shane Cottle in the number four right off the bat. Takes the east pink combination right to the front of the field and hopes to keep it there for the next 100 laps. Shane Cottle out in front out of Kokomo, Indiana. The throttle pulls away from your current point leader, Bud Kading, in that 29 car. A lot of power underneath the hoods of these USAC Silver Crown cars. You see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. there in the third spot. Boy, this track is just incredible. It is gigantic. Plenty of room for these guys, and this is what's unique about it. As they come through the turns here on a one-mile track, they are still crossed up going sideways. About 150 mile an hour plus. We heard it from the open. Ricky Stenhouse backing that thing in sideways, sliding up just a little bit as the rubber starts to lay down on this racetrack. We'll see those two and almost three grooves are racing through the turns. And no doubt these guys will also have to pay attention to how they're using up that right rear tire. They've got to keep it there. They've got to have something left in the last 25 laps. Right around the inside of turns three and four. Awesome shot right there. Right down on the guardrail and keep it nice and close. I mean, let's face it, you can get up in the middle groove here, the high groove here, and travel a much further distance. Shane Cottle working that low line in the Contos Racing number four. Bud Kading right behind him down low. Ricky Stenhouse as well working the low line. Take a look at the black number 26, the Dixie Chopper battle flag. That's Aaron Pierce in the 26 car, followed by former Silver Crown champion Dave Darlin in the Fox Co. 56. And you can really watch these chassis going to work as well. They are carrying that left front tire just about there. Once that thing starts to get some forward flight, we just start to creep up that left front tire. Dave Darlin, one of four drivers to win the USAC Triple Crown. That's National Midget National Sprint Silver Crown Championships included in those four, Poncho Carter, J.J. Yaley, and the man, Tony Stewart. I love the entry that Dave Darlin's taken. A little bit lower line on the entry, kind of washes up, he carries the momentum, and then down the straightaway he goes. Battle for seventh place between Gregory and Weiss. You can see Ron Gregory in that yellow number 48 car. Running the gutter rat line, the huggy pole line. Billy Weiss had his best career Silver Crown finish at Springfield earlier this year, trying to back it up there in the Mobile One number 12. These things putting out some huge horsepower, some of the most erratic machines on the planet. They have plenty of time here to keep them nice and calm, plenty of racetrack to work with. Really sideways right there as we take a look at the number five car, John Stanbro out of Brownsburg, Indiana. We take a look now at the 41 of Tom Capey and the 45, that's Donnie Beachler from nearby Springfield, Illinois. As a lot of feature event wins in the United States Auto. We got the Dixie Chopper battle flag still. Coons and Jones going at it for 10 spots. That's two of your USAC championship point leaders. Jones in the Lucas Oil USAC National Sprint Cars. Jerry Coons in the USAC National Midget Series leading those points for the second straight year. A couple of the guys getting side by side down the straightaway as they fly into these turns. It speeds over 150 miles per hour, standing in the throttle. Here we go again, the 27 and the 10. As you had mentioned before, Jerry Coons Jr. hanging right in there out of Tucson, Arizona, right alongside Levi Jones. And you can see Coons kind of moving up through the corner, so that group's starting to move up to the racetrack. We heard Bud Kading tell Kenny Sargent earlier in the night that we're gonna see some driving up on the fence that man right there, Shane Cottle, he's been running Huggy Pole. He's won a lot of races this year and in the past few years in sprint cars running around on the bottom. This is where he likes to run the gutter rat line. 
Well, and as the track rubbers up, the best traction is in that rubber, but unfortunately, as we keep saying, we we're kind of harping on it here, you have to take care of that tire. And to take care of that tire, you can't put it down there in the rubber where you're smoking it. So it'll actually wash up a little bit and try to cool it off some. And we did talk earlier how Shane Cottle finished second to Tracy Hines at this event last year. He led a lot of that race. He let Hines get by him on a restart. He definitely wants to win one for the Contos team. The battle for second spot. Yeah, and we've seen Stenhouse for a long time now trying to get around Keating. Looks like he's actually backed off of him just a little bit. Maybe he's just okay with riding around there and taking care of the car for now. Battle the chassis manufacturers with the Beast chassis out in front of DRC in second. Maxim running in that third spot. Starting to spread out a little bit here, Ken, as the top five cars kind of pull away from the rest of the field. And still, Coots and Jones going at it. Yeah, the group back in here a little bit tighter. Not quite the separation that we've seen out of the top two or three guys, but every position just as important. These guys are racing just as hard. Gary Coons taking a little peek to the inside of Levi Jones. Thinks better of it. We can look back a little bit from Gary Coons and find his teammate, Matt Neely, who started deep in the field in row 13, and Neely's slowly working his way to the front. Another great speed shot. Boy, some of those guys right down there on the rail. There's actually just a little bit of dirt down in there if you can get low enough, but. You're tinkering with the danger zone, no doubt. Get a little racy back here now. That red and white 43, that is JP, Johnny Parsons Jr., two-time winner here at the Ted Horn 100. That white devil zero, Wayne Rudiman Jr., currently second in Canadian USAC Silver Crown Series points. Well, it looks like issues there for the number 99 of Paul White. He gets out of the groove, falls down to the inside just a bit, and now we can see these guys are starting to fight for position. Johnny Parsons underneath Tom Cavey to take the spot, the 17th spot. Now Wayne Rudiman Jr. on the inside in the case contracting double zero. You see the 28 of Tim Barber, just his third event on the dirt here in 2007. Oh, yeah, good stuff right there. That's what it's all about. And, you know, we heard Kenny Sargent talk about third-generation racers out here. Well, when it comes to the rudiments, God knows how many generations that is. Now, those guys have been racing for as long as I can remember. In fact, my father raced with them in Florida back years ago. Oh, and a huge wreck. What a strange situation. Just kind of started to the left like the steering box had failed on the car. But that gives you a good indication of how fast these guys are going. You don't really see it. That'll bring out the red flag. But you see how hard they hit. And then what happens afterwards, it tells you how fast they're going. We'll take a look at the General Tire Instant Replay. Ray Bull in the 63 car. Looks like something broke, possibly the steering, as you alluded to, in a hard hit to the inside guardrail, the front end coming out of that. Final 10 laps of the 57th running of the Ted Horn 100. When we left you, we were under a caution flag condition. Unfortunately for Hud Cone, he got up into the wall. Our Kenny Sargent has more. Well, I don't know which one is hotter. Radiator or Hud Cone. You were lap traffic and take it from there. Well, I mean, we weren't we weren't really that good anyway. And you know, the slaughter come on the radio and said we had a guy, a guy behind us, and I thought he was going to the inside, but I couldn't really hear, and I pointed to the inside, and man, next thing I know, I mean, I lifted early for him and everything, and next thing I know, we get in the corner, and uh, of course he can't get under marbles. He comes down, breaks the front axle off in the fence, so you know, whatever. One of those racing deals, as they say. Well, everybody came down pit road, changed rear tires. We'll find out what combination they've gone for. Maybe the softer of the two compounds that are available. To hang on here, can Shane Cottle get his first win? That is the five of John Stambro, the driver out of the Hoosier State. The Baldwin Brothers racing number five car. Right behind him, though, the teammates from the RW Motorsports stable, Jerry Coons Jr. and Matt Neely, as Neely has worked his way to the front. That man is in the front, Shane Cottle, in the Contos Racing number four. He's been out there all night long, started off on the pole, and nobody's been able to deal with him so far. The battle for second place, Stenhouse and Katie, they've been going at it all night long. Ricky Stenhouse really wants to win here at DeCoin. He loves this racetrack. We heard from him earlier. We also talked to BK. He loves running DeCoin as well, running in that third spot. A little bit of smoke off the right rear for Bud Katie as the top three cars. Kind of pulling away from Double D in the 56. But it's just really about being smooth. It's a momentum track. You get it up there, you have to keep it there. And now it looks like the 22 car is starting to close in on Cottle, our leader. The Tony Stewart Racing Crew could have done a tire change in the pit area during that red flag condition. Getting that right rear a little bit hot. Stenhouse now trying to run down Shane Cottle. 
Cottle has certainly been the class of the field here tonight, Ken. I don't think anyone's going to have anything to get by that four car. It's extremely tough to pass. It looks like Kading's going to take a look right there. Yeah, Bud Kading trying to prove me wrong. Ricky Stenhouse as well as he'll try the inside on Shea Cottle. Starting to see a three-car battle for the lead. Dave Darlin hanging out in that four spot. It's definitely go time. The problem is once you try that move, once you try to make that pass, if you don't pull it off, it costs you some position, some real estate on the track, and then it's another lap or two to have another shot at it. Just carrying big speed, let the car just drift off the turn a little bit, out towards the wall. And so far, Cottle has just been perfect here tonight. Cottle's been very good, locked to the inside of that racetrack. He has not come off the guardrail. You can almost reach out and grab that thing as he works through the corners. Ricky Stenhouse, on the other hand, has been all over the racetrack trying to run him down. As it looks like the top two cars begin to pull away from Bud Kading. We saw a little smoke off the right rear of Kading. Now we're seeing a little bit off the 22 of Stenhouse. And the attitude of the number four car, the entry of the turn, you can see just a little bit straighter than the number 22 car. So he's able to keep the tires underneath that thing. Maybe just a little more rubber on that one. And these drivers do have a lot of onboard adjustments. They can uh, jack weight, use the weight jack, but they can also adjust the shock. So uh, Shane Cottle may be adjusting on his car, fine tuning it as you close in on the final laps here at the point. Ricky Stenhouse now falling back a few spots. And look at Cottle right there at the center of the turn, really just drove away from the 22. The car has just been set up nice all night long. It looks like the 22 can catch up and keep up, but I don't know if he has enough to pass him. Just blowing the smoke off the right rear tire there. Nice shot of the bond and the infield here at the Detroit State Fairgrounds. It's Cottle, Stenhouse, Kading, one, two, three, Dave Darlin in the Foxco 56. The top four cars pretty much about a straightaway ahead of the rest of the field. And you can see right there the edge of the turn, man. Stenhouse just a little sideways. Every time he's sideways, the number four car of Cottle puts a little more real estate between the two of them. $10,000 to take home the big win here at the coin. $5,000 for second. So Stenhouse trying to make some extra bucks. Run down your leader, Shane Cottle. That's Kokomo, Indiana versus Olive Branch, Mississippi with Campbell, California, BK in that third spot. And Stenhouse with that smoking hot right rear tire. Might have to watch out for Kading charging up from third place now. He's had a few laps to cool that right rear back off. Shane Cottle really doing a fantastic job. Still looking for his first career. Kading, USAC Silver Crown win. Ricky Stenhouse has two wins to his credit. Bud Kading with four. Double D has 11. So if Cottle can hold off these drivers, it will certainly be a feat here in the 57th running of the Ted Horn 100. For his first Ted Horn 100 win. The field loaded with some of the biggest names in all of the sport, including, we spoke of him before, Johnny Parsons, who holds the 100 mile record here. And the white flag comes out. Can he hang on for one more lap? Tom Hansing, the Chiefs, start a wave in the white flag. Stenhouse takes a peek to the inside. Hammerhead against the throttle for the final time. Down the back straightaway, oh. real sideways. SA exit turn two. No time to hold back now. If there's anything left inside of the car, this is when you apply it. Take the chance. Take the shot. But it's not going to happen if the number four car is perfect here. And he is. He will cross the strike first. Congratulations to the number four car driven by Shane Cottle out of Kokomo, Indiana. Cottle ran second at Manzanita earlier this year, finished fifth at the Springfield Mile, gets the win here at the Des Moines State Fairgrounds. Good stuff. The entire Contos Racing team will be very, very happy with their driver as we take a look at the final results here in the k and USAC Silver Crown 57th running of the Ted Horn 100 feature event. Congratulations to everybody here that's come out here and fought so hard to even make the field. Wayne Rudiman, by the way, we spoke about him earlier down there in 13th place. Johnny Parsons finishes in 16th place. We'll take a look at the rest of our field here. Talked about Donnie Beachland, one of the hometown heroes, finishes up in 19th. Hud Cohn ended his night in the fence, rounds out your top 20. An exciting night, no doubt. A long race here at one of the most spectacular tracks in the country. 
A lot of competition out here, and our winner took it from flag to flag. Started off on the pole, Shane Cottle kept it right there in the front for 100 miles.